May I have a motion that we only discuss those three items that you went into closed session for? One item under Virginia Code 2.2-3711A5, discussion of a prospective business or industry where no previous announcement has been made. One item under Virginia Code 2.2-3711A1, appointments. And one item under Virginia Code 2.2-3711A7, consultation with legal counsel concerning actual or probable litigation. So moved. And may I have a roll call for that, please? Yes. Ms. Chen? Yes. Ms. Dawson? Aye. Mr. East? Aye. Mr. Radford? Aye. Mr. Ponce? Aye. Mr. Reese? Aye. We need modifications of the public session. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we modify, sorry, we modify the agenda to add under, I guess, after the presentation? Or before the presentation? It doesn't matter for the resolution? After the presentation. After the presentation, the full council comments, resolution 2022-11. Second. And clarify, that'll be... Oh, I'm sorry, 2022, it's actually the 10th, my mistake. I'm sorry, that's not... We shall propose 10. You're just moving right after the presentation at 9. And with the one that we decided to hold off on. I know, but... Do you want to make this 10? Yeah, I think we can make it 10. Okay, so we'll correct it. So what are we doing? We're changing 2022-11 to 10. We're changing the agenda. Just to keep everything in order. So that will be the next number. It will be the next number. And that will be right after the presentation at 9. So I have a motion and a second. So may I have a roll call? Can I have a second? I have a motion. Obviously. Okay. All right, Mr. Penn? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Aye. Mr. East? Aye. Mr. Radford? Aye. Mr. Ponce? Aye. Mr. Reese? Aye. We'll move on to our first presentation. That will be honoring David N. Questenberry from his retirement. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. And Mr. Dawson, if you want to come up. I specifically asked that this be this week. I was gone last time. I wanted to be here when we did it. All right. Resolution 2022-09. Resolution honoring David N. Questenberry upon his retirement. Thank you. From the town of Pulaski. Whereas the town council of the town of Pulaski, Virginia, desires to recognize and commend those employees who, upon their retirement, have rendered a career of service to the citizens of the town of Pulaski. And whereas David Questenberry began serving the town as assistant to the town manager from March 20, 1997 through July 1, 2017. And whereas Mr. Questenberry began serving the town as both the clerk of council and the assistant to town manager beginning July 1, 2017. And whereas in each of these roles, Mr. Questenberry remained steadfast in his concern for the town and its future. And whereas Mr. Questenberry is retiring on or retired on March 1, 2022, marking 25 years of service to the town of Pulaski. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the town council of the town of Pulaski, Virginia, setting in regular session this 15th day of March 2022, that the town council extends its sincerest thanks and appreciation to David Questenberry for his dedicated service to the town of Pulaski. Be it furthermore resolved that the town council and the town employees extend to Mr. Questenberry their best wishes for an enjoyable and rewarding retirement. This resolution will be effective upon adoption and will be hereby adopted this 15th day of March 2022 by the duly recorded vote of the town council and the town of Pulaski, Virginia. May I have a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt resolution 2022-09, resolution honoring David N. Questenberry upon his retirement from the town of Pulaski. Thank you. 
2019 ordinance was updated under the 2003 ordinance there was a provision under the b2 that actually allowed for a residential use but that was uh, removed and so under the new ordinance uh, they're actually not conforming which would limit any addition to the property so uh, that's residential in base so a deck or a a shed or anything like that, it actually limits that type of expansion of the non-conforming use. So this zoning, um, rezoning would uh, change those properties from B2 general business district to an R2 two-family residential district to match the current land use. Um, also the remaining parcels that are now developed would be able to access that residential use and it would prevent there being a, a you know, business or some larger commercial operation being constructed on site that would really disturb the character of the district. Uh, the properties, um, uh, sorry, the Planning Commission uh, had voted 4-0, uh, 4-0 um, to, to recommend approval of this rezoning and it is a Planning Commission initiated, staff initiated rezoning um, as I stated after the review of the, of the comprehensive plan identifying uses and properties. And we have received feedback from the residents mostly just uh, asking an explanation on what it is when they got the vote. Um, none of them were opposed. They all understood what was happening. One person that does have their um, home address uh, on file for their business, it's not a business that uh, houses customers on, or hosts customers on site, uh, had asked if that would affect that. It would not. You can still register your home as an address for your business. Uh, of course, no one, no, no customer would be allowed on site in a commercial nature, um, but you can still have that as a, as a, a site address for your, for your business. Um, if you have any questions for me at this time, I'd be happy to answer them. Well, that's just the only question is, are there any other parcels like this in the town that we're going to be seeing? I mean, it just, it sounds like that when they, that update happened um, for the zoning ordinances, some of these kind of fell through the cracks. Fell through the cracks, yeah. I think this was one of them. As of right now, there's no, there's no more, uh, to my knowledge, however, um, you know, there could be a property here or there, but because this was 16 parcels, it, this one was really one that we needed to address. But I'm sure there's a property here or there where someone may have a home that's, a, that's zone B1, but that would be a little bit more, I think, on a case-by-case -case basis rather than us initiating a wide, uh, you know, an overall reason. Uh, I will say, on, on a separate matter, um, something that we've looked into. Uh, one update is the comprehensive plan update is coming to a close. It should be wrapping up this summer is, is one update. But another um, mention that we'll need to consider together collectively as a community is we have a lot of properties that are zoned heavy industrial neighboring our downtown business district. And those are really two incompatible zone uh, districts. So you have heavy industrial zone districts right in the middle of your downtown. And so we as a community need to consider looking forward if we're going to do anything to address those. But that would be another sort of instance of a property that's really, as we move forward, may not be properly zoned. However, the land use on those properties are, is still predominantly industrial. So it's not something like this prop, uh, this case, where the, the land use did not actually reflect the zoning at all. It was residential land use, and it's a B2 general business district zoning as it stands today. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Council have any other questions? With that, I'll open the public session. And if that's the case, there's two, two questions. I will close the public, public session. And then does Council have any other questions before we finish? Mayor, I make a motion to approve ordinance 2022 as written. Second. And I have a roll call for that, please. Mr. Payne? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Aye. Mr. East? Aye. Mr. Rackford? Aye. Mr. Fonks? Aye. Mr. Reeves? Aye. And next one on the agenda is budget appropriation resolution 2022 07, appropriation. Uh, capital budget, and we may have the staff report for that. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as the uh, resolution indicates, uh, we have identified uh, an additional uh, local government uh, investment fund uh, that has not been appropriated. Uh, we closed uh, those accounts um, in the last fiscal year. Uh, 
they were uh, dormant and had been for some time. We did use some of those monies to help the sewer fund uh, last year, and they're on a repayment uh, plan. This particular uh, amount of money, $234,580.64, we recommend be appropriated to the capital budget, uh, where it can be used uh, for multiple purposes uh, for one-time expenditures. And so I would recommend this adoption to you. Now we'll open up the public uh, public um, hearing for this. <coughs> and now close the public hearing. There's no other questions. If you would like to make a motion, Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt resolution 2022 by 07 as written. Second. 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 Mr. Dawson, Aye. Mr. East, Aye. Mr. Ratcliffe, Aye. Mr. Ponce, Aye. Mr. Reeves. Aye. And then the next one for a public hearing is purchase of property uh, resolution 2022-08, approving purchase of property. So can I have a staff report for that? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there are two properties that the town uh, is uh, interested in purchasing. Uh, one is on Pierce Avenue uh, and would be a part of our effort to uh, do an acquire, rehabilitate, sell program using program income from the community development block grant program of the town. So there's no use of general uh, fund monies for that. Uh, the other, uh, as you can see, is the uh, address 3012 on Green Highway, uh, about the uh, 20 acres of land, and we intend to, with your approval, uh, purchase that with the uh, funds in the capital budget uh, that you all just appropriated uh, with the prior resolution. Thanks, Council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, with that, I'll open the public hearing. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt resolution 2022-08 approving the purchase of property. Presentation FY2122 Revenue Update. Um, Jackie Morris, Finance Director. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, I've asked Jackie to uh, appear before you tonight. Uh, she's a little bit nervous about this, but I think it's one of her first times that she's been in front of you all. But I think it's appropriate, given where we are uh, in the fiscal year, uh, to share with you all both a revenue update uh, as well as an expenditure update. Um, I think uh, it's advantageous for you to have this type of briefing as we, in the next month or so, move into the actual development of the budget itself. I will tell you, um, this is the bottom line, that we're doing very well on uh, both fronts. Uh, we have uh, provided some detailed information for you, but I think Jackie's intent is really to highlight for you kind of the major items, both from an expenditure side and a revenue side tonight, uh, and then be available to answer questions if you may have. So with that as an introduction, Jackie. Did you leave out, leave out the grade sheet on her? And for somebody who was suddenly quiet, I mean, just saying it. Yeah. <laughs> I know it was. I started to say the only one she should be nervous about was Jamie. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Turned out I didn't need to say it. <laughs> <laughs> he came through. Huh. Um, I've provided each of you a copy of a uh, report that I've done for the revenue lines as well as the expenditures. Um, just to give a brief rundown of how I developed the sheet, I do have each individual line item listed with the adopted amount for the budget. Um, 
prayer with the residents. It has to do with the date where we're at. This is the date range from July 1st through yesterday, March 14th. And then it gives a percentage of where we're at so far within this fiscal year. And as Ms. Bertram has stated, we have, um, we're doing well. We are with where we should be with the time frame. We're two weeks shy of finishing up the third quarter of, the, of this fiscal year, one quarter left to go. Um, we'll start with the revenue side. Just wanted to touch base um, on a couple of things just to draw your attention to. Um, one is the PSC, which is a public service corporation real estate. That one does show a zero uh, amount for year to date revenue. This um, is an entry that uh, did not get made before I completed this report. So I wanted to give you that amount because I do need to do a journal entry to record the second half of the real estate from December. So the amount that that entry will be will be for 44000 843.28, which still puts us in pretty good range um, of what we anticipated in the budget. Uh, going further down on the bank stock tax, it does show a zero amount for that. Um, that revenue will start coming in probably May and June, so it will, we'll see those totals um, as we get closer to the end of the fiscal year. Um, the cigarette tax stamp is coming in a little lower than what we had anticipated. Um, of course, the rate was increased uh, to 40 cents July 1st. And um, per Ms. Bertram's um, suggestion, I sent out two staff members last week to local vendors that we supply the stamps to. Uh, the assistant finance director and then Ms. Poe went out um, they visited 10 of the vendors that we supply the cigarette stamps, and they did find that those vendors are in compliance um, with having those available on the packs. And they questioned them as far as the sales, um, if they had noticed a difference um, to try and get an idea of where we're at while we're so low with what we anticipated with the current increase. Out of the 10 that they visited, um, Four of those have noticed a significant drop in sales. Um, reasoning, not quite sure if people, you know, were cutting back on smoking, it's surprised that they're going elsewhere to, to get the cigarettes. So, um, but the vendors were very gracious. They were very forthcoming with their information and were compliant with everything. So that helped give us a better understanding of where um, we were at and the reason for that I reduction. I should add to that that when we raised the tax last year, it was with the understanding that um, the neighboring communities were going to go to a similar number. Uh, and then it's uh, my understanding that uh, for several reasons, the county decided to delay uh, initiating a tax um, and have only very recently, since the beginning of the calendar year, joined the Mount Rogers uh, group in order to have collection uh, handled by a regional entity. And so they are in a regional tax system that's slightly different uh, than ours. We've been collecting cigarette tax for years, so with raising the tax had no impact on us in terms of the workload. Uh, it represented something new for those other jurisdictions, and they chose to, as the state legislature allowed, to have a regional authority that would have expenses, but then they would do the collection. So the county um, have not started, they don't tax federal yet? Well, counties didn't even have the authority to tax <coughs> until July of a year, well, actually, a little bit before that, because our rate went in July of last year. But the legislature or did give them the authority. And uh, the other communities that are not immediately uh, surrounding us did go to the higher rate. Um, but um, the county, as I said, found that they wanted to go into this regional entity, the closest one, because we were not um, in a position to form one in the New River Valley because the other communities already, like us, had a system in place to collect. And so the county did go with that 
regional entity. So they started later. I don't know if that's a part of the explanation or not, but that is something that transpired after we put uh, the increase into effect. And we'll just see, perhaps from now uh, through the end of the, of the fiscal year, if there's any kind of change. Some years ago, we saw a similar, I think, when there was a, it went from 10 cents to a quarter, it actually kind of predated me, but we saw similar drops in numbers uh, because people just went to the county. Well, I think with the county imposing one, uh, the choices will be narrowed, you know, uh, and I'm not sure that the uh, gas prices won't affect some choices too on a lot of things, not just mm -hmm. this. Um, but we also are <coughs> seeing um, a lot of these vape stores opening up, and those uh, do not fall um, into the category of cigarette tax, so some of it may be siphoned off uh, to that kind of smoking activity. I would say it probably wouldn't be too hard to find some data that shows that that trend is probably well beyond the time of last year. Oh, absolutely. Um, another one that I wanted to touch on was the convenience fee charge. That is something that we started this year. Um, this is where customers come in to pay using a debit card or credit card. We have currently been accepting those payments and not imposing a fee on customers. And the bank, um, of course, we were being charged and the town was absorbing that cost. And with the convenience of that, that fee was getting um, pricey. Um, so we started July 1, charging $1.75 um, on transactions um, should they choose to pay with a car. Um, that has helped. I have spoke with Ms. Birch and just looking at the month to month with the charges and what we have coming in. And the credit card company, depending on the type, whether it's Visa, MasterCard, or American Express, they each charge a percentage based on the dollar amount. Um, if it's a normal month, which is water bills, you don't see that much of a change. Um, I think tax time is where it's hitting us because the dollar amount is increasing so much that the percentage they're charging to our dollar seventy-five is there's just no comparison. So I have um, mentioned to Ms. Merchant that this year with this budget we may have to look at I think that charge to sort of where we can come out even um, with what we're being charged by the bank. Um, we are not um, making anything off this. It's not extra revenue for the town. It's just simply trying to cover costs that we're having to pay out um, that the banks are charging. And that's a flat percentage from the bank. Yes. Like two and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Jackie, didn't you tell me that uh, the county has actually imposed a similar fee and it's higher than our dollar seventy-five. Am I They're actually doing a percentage, and I want to say it's like two point nine yeah. percent um, of the amount of the transaction. But our philosophy of putting that into place uh, during the budget last year was to have people that are benefiting from the service pay for it, um, in the same way that we made some other changes to various fees and charges, and the people that are using credit cards to pay, we felt should be paying for that additional service and not the town absorbing it, which we had been absorbing it completely up to that point. This year we're recovering you know, most of it, but not all of it, and so we will be looking at that as well as other fees during the budget process. And I think when we originally looked at those fees, we were trying to avoid discouraging somebody from, right. from mm -hmm. using that method of payment. Um, but at the same time, I get you know, first the day it gets expensive. And banks win in the end, right? Yeah. And what, you know, I know initially you got a lot of pushback <coughs> from people, but isn't it kind of accepted at this point by people who. Pretty much. Um, when you have some that are not happy, but I mean, it's, you have a choice. You don't have to pay with a card. Of course, you know, always accept cash, check, or money order. So they have a choice if they don't want to pay that fee. Um, of course, it's convenient with the car just to swipe it and go on, but everything has a price, so. Um. I do have a question um, about that. I mean, I, I pay my water bill through a, through a direct bank 
strong, mm -hmm. and that's very convenient. And I, and I don't think it imposes any costs on you. And, and, it, and it maintains that immediate payment convenience that we get because you know we don't nobody has to sign a check and bring it to the bank and do all that nonsense, which is a cost that you know we have. We're going to absorb that cost for somebody giving us a check, you know, even if we don't actually have a, you know, actual out-of-pocket cost. But the question is, is there any way to expand that option for some people? Is there like a, you know, just so that if people want to pay their taxes through a, like a bank draw, is there a, is there any option for doing that? Just to sort of maintain that convenience, but also not impose a cost on the town. Are you talking about doing um, through your bank itself or signing up for ACH to where it's automatically deducted? Well, I mean, it, it, I just didn't, I mean, I know because the, the water bill is a monthly thing, but they, right. it, it's set up that way that it's automatically deducted. Right. Is there a way for people to do that for, like, a, for taxes and more, more one-time payments, I would say, you know, not like a regular monthly thing? We can't, we do ACH for water bills. Right. Um, currently, we have one customer who takes advantage of the real estate tax okay. being um, set up with ACH. Um, I don't know if people are aware. I, I, uh, that I'm that not so. I'm sure more, more other people are too. Yeah, so. that is an option. There is no cost for that. Um, and then it's come out on the whole thing. They don't have to worry okay. about making a payment. Personal property, we do not have that capability for that. Um, I don't know if it's in our software, if it's something we can look at down the road. Um, but yeah, ACH is an option. It's free. It's just a matter of signing up. Filling out the form and turn in the bank information. Okay, great. I mean, maybe that's something that somebody complains to say, hey, you know, if you want to not have to pay, you know, we bring a check in and something, you can sign up for this and not have to do that. That might be a good idea on flyer for our water bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially as we're coming on to that June when we have to pay that, you know, maybe to go out with our tax bill. Both, um, yeah, both the real estate and the water. No. Yeah, that would be, I think, a, a good use of our. Um, and we do have a good number. Um, we average probably about six to six hundred and fifty a month that's signed up currently now for ACH. So. Um, and it's super convenient, and, and it's been nothing but great. I, I will say, I have no problems with it. So thank you for that. Um, I'll just, uh, one more thing I wanted to touch on on the general fund that I had broken down on the Depot 611 rent. That does show a zero amount, and that was the rent that we were getting from the office space where my flight um, was located, so um, there is no revenue um, that is coming in currently for that. But as you see for the general fund, um, it's the total of the budgeted amount where we, were at, where we are at now with what we've collected in revenue. So we are at 66% um, in range of where we should be for this time in the general fund. Uh, water and sewer fund are broken out, a little bit smaller um, lines, but um, as you can see, they are pretty much both holding their own as well. They're coming in the same percentile as the general fund. So overall, um, Ms. Bertram and I, when we looked at this, both agree that we're pretty much on track with where we should be so far within this budget year. Do you have any questions more on the revenue side? I just had one question. So on the meals tax, mm -hmm. so you know, people pay their meals tax monthly, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be through the end of February. Is that yes, because they're not new till the 20th of the month, so this does not reflect totals for the month of March. So, so if it's 70, over 75 percent at the end of February, it makes it well. run well over. Yeah. But we're a little bit behind on local sales tax, interestingly. Yeah. Or, but does that is that more cyclical though? I would think of, I would think we get a lot more at like the end of the year, then it might drop off in January, February. Okay, back up. Okay. So that, that might just be a natural trend. Yeah. Okay. Um, over on the expenditure side, the yeah. first one would be happy with the ones that were over, so we wanted to kind of give you the ones that weren't quite there. But uh, that's an excellent point, and we're very pleased. That, and you'll see, too, that we had just as a much smaller amount, we had budgeted low this year on the. Um, transient occupancy tax, the hotel tax, because we had such an abysmal 
year, the previous year, because of the pandemic. Well, if you look at that on a line item, it has exceeded the projection, and we expect even more there, you know, before the end of the fiscal year. So on the um, expenditure side, again, it's broken out into the three funds, the general fund, uh, water and sewer. Um, and as you see, we're pretty much on target. Um, there are some that are under uh, a little. Um, some of those, um, if we have staffing, um, especially in the sewer fund, um, there is 42% uh, on the sewer collection. We've had some vacancies there. So some of the salary lines we haven't had to pay out. Um, so they are coming a little under. But for the most part, you've got the general fund coming in at 60%. Water and sewer. Sewer is 60%, and then sewer, of course, is a little lower. Really, we're at 57. We're still under range for what we have to get and hope for safe water within this budget year. And Jackie, why don't you uh, explain to the council the procedure that we implemented to try to make sure that we do uh, stay within budget on the expenditure side. There's not a lot we can always do on the revenue side. It's going to either come in or it's not, but mm -hmm. we can control the expenditure side. And I know we've made a number of changes. Maybe you could share that with the council mm -hmm. so they understand. We um, currently each month uh, print out a report for each of the department heads so they can see where they're at if they're falling short. If there's transfers they need to make within their budget to stay within their means. Um, we have had some that have issues with electrical bills have gone up the past few months. Um, whether it was heater left on way too long, cranked up too high, or um, just to draw their attention to sort of catch these things <coughs> before it gets out of control. Um, having the department heads have more hands-on, uh, making them more aware, more responsible of their budget um, has been very helpful. I think it's made a difference, as you can see, within our totals. We have made um, best security measures within our control of spending. Um, they do not have the flexibility to spend as freely as they want. So that's monitored more closely, which, um, as you can see, has worked. Um, Ms. Bertram um, also gets a report every month of every revenue line and every expenditure line for all the departments and i assure you she is through each of those reports with a fine tooth comb mm -hmm. and we go through them monthly so um she uh, has a good eye an eagle eye to catch these little things which is good that's ex expected um i have learned a lot from her over this past year was stepping into this role last march as interim um it was terrifying, I'll be honest. But um, I learned a lot, and I learned a lot from Ms. Kirchner. Um, but just watching the department has have more of a say and control over their budget and just being aware. I think there were some that were not, I don't know if they didn't want a part of it or didn't fully understand, but I have the capability now to sit down with them and work with them line, line item by line item. They don't know what's getting paid out here, how much is this, how much should I budget. So it's um, rewarding to help them in that aspect um, and to help understand how overall with the town, how much it's important to maintain within the budget and work within your means. Um, the department heads have been good to work with and um, as well as Ms. Bertram. So um, we will continue plugging away we got another quarter, two weeks left in this one, and another one to go. So um, I anticipate the totals are going to be right on track. So I can tell a big difference from the summer last year within our budget. And we're getting ready to kick off, getting ready for the next fiscal year. Uh, worksheets have been turned in, so we'll start that process as well. Do you have any other questions? Or? I, would just like, I would just like to say thank you. Good job, well done. Um, your staff, the department head, Ms. Bertram. Um, I know I have a, uh, a whole lot more confidence in what we're seeing here. Uh, we're certainly moving in the right direction, and that's, that's attributable to you and, 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 and Ms. Bertram and the rest of the staff. And the department head, so thank you very much.
Resolution appointing Darlene L. Burcham as acting clerk of council. Someone will make a motion. Please. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt resolution 2022 10, uh, resolution appointing Darlene L. Burcham as acting clerk of council. As written. Second. <laughs> Second Brooke it. and Debbie did it. Together, we have a call. Yes, sir. And we have a roll call. Yes, sir. Mr. Penn? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Aye. Mr. East? Aye. Mr. Radcliffe? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Reed? Aye. Let me just say this is not a position that um, I aspire to, nor do I want to continue with. Uh, but with Mr. Cluvenberry's retirement, we need to have somebody official. Uh, when he was uh, out before, I was signing for the clerk of council because we still had someone in that position. So I don't want anybody to assume that suddenly the town manager is taking on another job on a permanent basis. If you know anybody who's interested in being the clerk of uh, council, please have them contact me. I'd be more than happy to interview them any time of the day or night to get them. <laughs> 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 I'll move on to council comments. So, Mr. Kennedy, do you have any comments? Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, real quick, I just want to uh, uh, want to commend somebody tonight that probably doesn't get a lot of uh, attention, but has done a wonderful job for the town, especially in the last uh, items that we had at Sarah Turner Town Attorney, Mr. Spencer Reed. You've done a great job uh, in, Rich in Richmond the other day on a project we're working on, Ms. Bertram. Uh, and one more thing, Mr. I'd like to uh, send a letter or uh, some kind of a thank you letter to Delegate Maria March for the work that she went on and beyond uh, for our police department. Uh, we're not 100% over the hill, but probably as close as we've ever been, and she never let up. Uh, she had a house with everybody, take a look at this thing that's been done, I think it's going to get done, or the wording will be changed and across the state. Uh, but to an attorney, what I say in the job is Burke will never give up. Uh, I was in Richmond with these two. Got to hammer out for a lot of delegates down there trying to explain. I think they understand. I uh, hope they do. <laughs> but uh, maybe send her a letter of thank you and gratitude from our town, along with the chief of police and for all her work. Well, it's not over yet. Uh, Correct. I have spoken with her aide, and there will be another meeting on it, uh, and it will be held here in Pulaski, which we don't have a date yet. Um, but uh, we're going to continue that path until it's successfully resolved. But you're absolutely right. She has been a real champion. Uh, and I'll be happy to prepare uh, that correspondence for the council. Mm -hmm. Mr. someone to do all our money. Just, I know, because he's going to start in before long. It was soon. It was warm while I was gone, I know. So he's going to start in about the mowing. Oh, <laughs> so, oh, about a week. I know, but you would. Uh, <laughs> so if we could look into someone that would do all of it for us. I mean, it may be cheaper than having him out. I don't know. We have been trying to evaluate that. I will tell you that enforcement officer Carl uh, is in the process of sending out letters to all of the businesses on our two major corridors, reminding them of their responsibility uh, to do that in way. Uh, and we'll see you know, how that works. Um, part of what we have to look at is identifying how much of our staff time 
uh, is being used uh, for the Boeing operations because the last time this was discussed, you all were interested in uh, looking at the cost to mow all of our public lands, not just these mediums that um, Mr. Ratcliffe had uh, a legitimate concern about. And believe me, this last couple of days, I've been driving them all time to watch how much grass is growing uh, myself, you know, to see when we're going to have to start doing things. We are going to be putting a reminder on our Facebook page uh, since uh, we're now into daylight savings time and hopefully spring is coming, although that snow the other day it was a reminder that uh, Mother Nature decides when it's really spring. Uh, the calendar does not. So. Oh, we, I mean, and like in just planting in general, like flowers and stuff, will we be replacing plants everywhere, or can we check into someone doing that for us too? Well, we've removed a lot mm -hmm. of plants where we literally had too many, mm -hmm. and it was interfering with the growth of some of those plants. Uh, and they still have plans to replenish some of those areas now that uh, we're going to be in the better weather. We don't have one person that's dedicated to it full time as we did previously. Um, so I'm not sure how much uh, savings would be there, but that's something that we can also take a look at. Because I know there's places that will do the landscaping and the, and I've just had multiple people question me about plants. They saw them come out and say, are we not having flowers? I said, we're working on it. You got to take it out before you can plant. And I will tell you that we've gotten a number of compliments for the work that was done last fall in taking a lot of that excess foliage out. Um, so that was a good first step, but we have to go to the next step. You know, in the five minutes of this deep, it's <laughs> Well, that's all I have. So I guess we'll move on to uh, the manager's report. All right. Well, I want you all to mark this date on your calendars because we are so proud of the fact that this is the first time in at least three years that we have all four filters operating at the water treatment. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, the ARPA funding certainly helped to accelerate that, but we've done all the testing that's required by the health department, and we are fully operational. We have a few additional improvements that we want to make at the filter plant, uh, and uh, in this coming budget, we'll, in all probability, move for a 24-7 operation rather than uh, two shifts, going to three shifts a day. It actually would have um, a major uh, improvement to the operation of the type of system that we have, which is not the norm, but they operate better if they run continuously as opposed to being shut down for eight hours a day and then starting back up. But we're just very, very pleased that those filters are in place. Um, we have posted on the town's Facebook page as well as provided you all a list of a significant number of streets that are in the process of being paved this year. Uh, we are going to a twice a year paving uh, that I guess maybe in the past they did and then they fell back to once a year so it ended up being in the fall. I've asked them to divide the list, and we will do some in the spring and some in the fall. Uh, in addition to the normal uh, funding that we have through VDOT, uh, to do street paving on streets that they have approved that meet state standards. This year, with the ARPA money, we're going to be uh, paving a number of what are called ineligible streets. They're primarily neighborhood streets because they aren't as wide as the specification for VDOT. And without the ARPA money, those streets probably wouldn't get paid for another 10 or 12 years. So it's a real opportunity for a number of streets to be paid. Um, and if he, anybody's interested uh, in what that list consists of, they can go to the town's Facebook page or give us a call. Um, I want to also mention, because we've heard it on occasion in the feedback on our Facebook recording, uh, and live uh, display of your meetings that sound seems to be an issue um, for some people. So we have had two companies come and they will be giving us an estimate within the next week of how we can improve the sound system here, not for you all, but for those who view us on Facebook or watch it as a rerun. Um, so hopefully that will be in place uh, before the end of this fiscal year and certainly will improve hopefully the number of people who are 
uh, viewing uh, your meetings and providing comments. And then I thought it was particularly appropriate um, that this evening I share with you all um, some commendation uh, memos that I have received uh, regarding our public safety employees. I know we are all saddened by learning of the death of a young officer in uh, the Allegheny Highlands. Uh, that young man uh, just graduated with one of our officers from uh, the academy last year. So uh, she, in fact, is familiar uh, with the young man. But we had two incidents in the last month uh, that involve our public safety personnel that I want you all to be aware of and I want the community uh, to be aware of. Uh, the first one occurred on the 14th of February, uh, where Lieutenant Grimm, Sergeant Little, Cap uh, Corporal uh, Cote, uh, Corporal Lincoln, Corporal Jones, and Officer Bolt responded to an unknown situation involving a disgruntled employee at the James Harvey plant. The suspect had entered the building in his personal vehicle and reportedly had struck a wall. Uh, upon arrival, these officers entered the plant without complete details and without knowing what the suspect's intentions were. Without regard for their own safety, the officers began attempting to locate the suspect. Uh, they also focused on protecting and evacuating the employees of James Hardy, who the officers believed uh, potentially to be in grave danger. Once the suspect and his vehicle were located, these officers displayed a great deal of courage and the suspect was apprehended without any further incident. Neither the suspect nor any of the officers were injured. And um, Lieutenant Saul, who made this commendation, said that he believes because all of the officers conducted themselves in a thoroughly confident and professional manner, the incident uh, was resolved uh, peacefully. And then he goes on to say that he thinks that uh, these officers' actions should be commended and that this memo be placed in their personnel files, which we certainly uh, have done. The other one I want to mention to you involved uh, several of our law enforcement and public safety officials. Uh, and this was provided uh, to the chief of the fire department um, by one of the captains. And he um, summarizes the events that occurred in the first few minutes of a fire at the Washington Square Apartments. Uh, the call came in as a structure fire in an apartment with flames showing. Um, one of the engines responded with three personnel. Uh, they were Captain Hamlin, uh, engine firefighter Jeremy Hodge, and firefighter Eddie, Eddie Arnold. Uh, there were reports that there were possibly people trapped uh, in the unit, and uh, the captain assumed command of the incident determined it was a working structure fire with fire showing and heavy smoke conditions in the complex. Uh, they received conflicting stories of the whereabouts of a lot of residents initially. Uh, after a walk around, they confirmed that there were entrapments uh, within the apartments on the third floor. Uh, that floor was uh, the floor above the fire and the smoke conditions were quickly becoming life threatening uh, for occupants of that third floor. At which point, uh, Sergeant Eddie Whitaker, who is one of our volunteers, uh, was sent to the third floor to try to access the apartments while another chief was sent uh, to get an extension ladder. Uh, one of the deputies who was there from uh, the Sheriff's Department was tasked with spraying water into the fire room. Um, from the exterior of the structure and attempt to keep the fire in check while they were trying to do these rescues. Uh, the extension ladder was thrown to the third floor window. We had one of our firefighter personnel ascend the ladder and assisted two victims out of the window and down the ladder. And then, of course, those individuals were sent immediately to the EMS unit for evaluation. Fire was off, obviously brought under control and the apartments were considered cleared. Those individuals who were in that apartment were obviously displaced. But we had um, four individuals from the fire department, those individuals I just named, two police officers, Officer Dickerson and Officer Ferguson, and two officers from the Sheriff's Office, uh, Brent Downey and Jason Egan, who all responded in a most professional and admirable way. And I think it's important that we 
uh, take time on occasion to recognize the heroic efforts. And I'm sorry I missed one. There was also uh, someone from the Dublin Fire Department, Chief Russell and Officer Graham Martin from the Sheriff's Office. So uh, these individuals put themselves in harm's way uh, on many occasions. And I wanted to take the opportunity to share that with you all tonight. There were too many people to suggest that they come to your meeting. Uh, to be recognized, uh, but we will certainly see that these commendations are placed in their personnel record. And that's it, Thank you, Ms. Berkey. Um, okay, with that, um, we have a reminder of the future council meetings. Uh, we'll be, our next one is April 5th, 2022, closed session. Uh, our council closed session starts at 5.30 and the public session starts at 7. And with nothing else being on the agenda, I declare this meeting adjourned.